welcome you all to the IPS TSB 9th midterm CPD on this significant day, the 10th of December 2023. I am Dr. Navya, final year postgraduate of Apollo Medical College, and I have the privilege of being your host for this enlightening and collaborative event. Today, at this CPD, we are delving into the crucial theme of establishing psychiatric services. With this, I would like to welcome onto stage the chairpersons for the first session of the day on the topic, Establishing Psychotherapy Services. I welcome Dr. Minazafar Nasirabadi, President of IPSTSB, Professor and Head of Department of Psychiatry, Deccan College of Medical Sciences. Welcome, sir. I would now like to welcome Dr. Keshav Rao, Senior Consultant of Chetna Hospital, Sikindrabad. Welcome, sir. We start off today's spread of sessions with Dr. Narsimha Reddy Pinati, sir, who is the Professor of Psychiatry from Virtue Rowan, New Jersey, USA. Sir is also the Medical Director of CCBHC Oaks Integrated Care. Sir, as always, yes. is an enthusiastic teacher of psychotherapy and his sessions are always thought-provoking. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. You are able to hear me, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, anytime there is anything to do with psychotherapy in India, and I get an opportunity, I, I grab it. And uh, I'm thankful for this particular opportunity too. Uh, because uh, I am a very firm believer of uh, psychotherapy by psychiatrist in the routine settings that we do, that, that we actually practice. And um, for the past two years, have been working with the postgraduates in India to help them build psychotherapy skills, particularly the CBT skills. So what I'm going to share today is primarily, be in, not theoretical, but primarily based upon what uh, we have been doing with the postgraduates for the past couple of years. Yeah. Okay. Now let me share my screen. Um, I, uh, are you able to see my screen? Someone should say yes. Yes. Sir. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, okay. At the end of uh, the session today what I would like everyone to get is just have uh, reasons why it is very important and critical for us to establish psychotherapy services, number one. And what are the different levels of psychotherapy that one can provide in, in our settings? And at least about four things that anyone can do to incorporate psychotherapy into their practice. The, so, you might wonder, what is someone who, who is uh, uh, practicing in United States uh, and um, uh, is go has not seen patients in India going to talk about psychotherapy in India? And as I have mentioned to you, it is primarily based upon what we have been doing for the past two years. What have we been doing? We have been actually training postgraduates, both in the theoretical aspect of CBT but not only that, but actually postgraduates are uh, providing psychotherapy services for the patients in the Indian setting. And in the past six months, what we have also added is that the postgraduates get supervision on a weekly basis for the cases that they have seen for the previous week. And as part of what we have been doing, we have been able to take that information and data and present in the last two ANSIPS meetings. And some of the cases that have been presented are major depressive disorder, panic disorder, PTSD, psychotic disorder. And uh, we have another session coming up in the next ANSIPS, ANSIPS meeting. And uh, yesterday only we got the uh, approval for that. So basically my point is, to just demonstrate 
that this is what is happening in India, in Telangana, in the past two years. So um, I would like to kind of simplify psychiatric practice and kind of look at it very simply. So with all the different diagnoses we have, all the different terms we have, a patient who is walking into our office with the family is coming because of one of two things. One, distress, and all the symptoms can be presumed under the term distress, psychological distress. Sometimes the distress may be in the patient, but sometimes the distress in the family because the patient does not even recognize that. And second thing is dysfunction. They are not able to play the life roles that they are supposed to be playing. On. And those are the two things that bring individuals to, to us. Now, what is our goal? Our goal is reduce distress, improve functioning. And for us to do that, we basically take uh, for a comprehensive treatment plan, we look at three different aspects of treatment. Number one is starting with what the patient can do, self-help and environment lifestyle changes, environmental changes all come under one category. That's number one. Number two is biological therapies. And the biological therapies include pharmacology, as well as stimulation therapies, including ECT, TMS, and those kinds of things. And the third part is the psychotherapy services. For us to effectively treat any individual who is coming for psychiatric uh, symptoms and psychiatric diagnosis, I think we need to address each of these. And it is a, it, it is a fact that we primarily focus on biological treatments and the psychological and the self-help becomes kind of less, less important. So um, you might ask the question, in a setting like India, where uh, psychiatrists are extremely busy, the ratio of the population to psychiatrists is the very, very low uh, uh, number of psychiatrists per, for the population. How can we provide psychotherapy service? Why not focus on just uh, uh, medication management? And the reason why we should not do that is this. One, we do not have perfect medications, period. If you look at any randomized control study of either the uh, antipsychotic medication, antidepressant medication, what are you looking at in terms of the uh, uh, percentage improvement uh, in symptoms uh, uh, more than the placebo, 30%, let's say, if a, a study. So, and if you're looking at a patient who is coming in front of, uh, uh, to us, and if I say, hey, I'm going to give you this uh, 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 Prozac for you, and by the way, your depression is going to go from 10 to, to 7, okay? 10 is the worst and 7. Oh, how happy will, will the patient be? We know that, right? So, in uh, medications that are uh, imperfect. Now, even where the medications are causing symptom, uh, are leading to symptomatic improvement, is there associated functional improvement? That's the more important thing, right? At the end of the day, what, what are people looking for? People are looking to, to, uh, to uh, go back to playing their life roles. Be they, basically, they just want to be normal. Okay? Now, the third reason is what, is what I see more often in patients who are coming to, to, to India through the, the, and what I hear from the postgraduates I'm, I'm supervising, that more and more people are coming and saying, sir, I want counseling services. Which we, I, as you know, this is another word for psychotherapy. I don't want medication. And some of the patients that the postgraduates treated are people who just didn't want medication and were just uh, uh, given psychotherapy. Now, there is another thing which I think the Indian population is more primed for psychotherapeutic interventions. Most of the individuals who are coming to us actually have gone to someone, some kind, some, um, uh, uh, some alternate therapy, some spiritual this thing and all. 
and also most of the patients are in the in the habit of listening to 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 lectures involved in spirituality and all in a way there is a lot of common commonality in in the mode of how the information is transmitted in the this the spiritual context as well as the the psychotherapy context now i say indian patients are primed because in in the western world uh, the uh, uh, because of the separation of the state and religion that the, uh, religion is uh, is not talked about much spirituality is not talked about much commonly in the treatment settings um uh, now uh, another reason why you we, we as psychiatrists need to to provide is because there are not enough good therapists you know that and it is going to be more expensive for, for, for the patients if you have to go to therapy to someone and uh, come to medication for you, uh, not to mention about the logistical part of it. Now, the we, these are all the reasons as far as the patient is concerned. But I think what trumps everything is this particular one. What is it, what is in it for yourself? What is in it for yourself is actually experiencing the joy of psychiatric practice every day. If a patient is coming to us and you look at two scenarios, patient is coming to you with major depression, hopelessness, you say, I'm giving you this medication. By the way, it takes three weeks for you to see the improvement. That's number one. That's scenario number one. Scenario number two, is you are giving the medication, but you're also taking maybe another five to 10 minutes and you're going to do a small intervention and say, hey, listen, if you did this, how, how bad was your depression? It was an eight out of 10, sir. Okay, now you, what you, uh, you do this, what happens? My depression is a six out of 10, sir. So you just by doing something like this, you have changed your depression from eight to six. What does that tell you? Oh, that means I can do something, sir. And then what happens to what do you see on his face? A smile. And what do you see in your heart? Satisfaction. Okay. This is the most important reason why we should do psychotherapy. So for my very younger colleagues who are um, uh, 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 in the beginning stages of their career um, and looking at a very long career, I'm going to ask you to do something that I was not asked to, to, to do. It is um, start your, your uh, thinking, long-term thinking about your psychiatric practice with value clar clarification. What I mean by that, uh, ask yourself very openly and honestly, why do I want to be in psychiatry? What do I want to gain if, say, at the end of my psychiatric practice, if I look back and say, what is it that, that I'm going to be most uh, satisfied with? Is it earning a lot of money? Is it becoming a famous psychiatrist? Is it becoming a specialist in something? Is it becoming a, a, an expert in something? Or is it, is it something that I want to see on a day-to-day -day basis where an individual who is coming to me and is getting satisfied and leaving satisfied. And that is what I want to see. Now, there is no right or wrong answer. The only thing is that do this process for yourself. See for yourself because as you move through life, there are going to be times where you have to make decisions. And the decisions have to be made in the context of your long-term values. And if you are very clear about your values, then your decisions, there will be clarity about your decisions. So, uh, so if you have decided that you want to provide psychiatric services based upon what you have heard so far, what are the things that you need? Okay. Number one uh, is the attitude. I would say there are two types of attitude. The unhelpful attitude versus helpful attitude. And just to give a, a, a couple of examples, unhelpful attitudes is, hey, in a very busy practice, it is difficult to do psychotherapy. It's an unhelpful attitude. Okay. No, the pay, most patients who come here are not appropriate for psychotherapy. I think it is an unhelpful attitude. But a helpful attitude is it if once I develop the right kind of skill set, it does not take time. 
every interventions, normal interventions become psychotherapeutic interventions. And we're going to talk a little bit about micro techniques that you can use. Okay? Second thing, you need the knowledge base. And the third, uh, uh, about the psychotherapy that you are providing. And you all know that uh, the, the one which has the most evidence base is cognitive behavior therapy. And then you have to build the skills. So how do you develop each of these things? First of all, attitude. It requires a self-reflection, looking at your own values and looking at what you want to do and developing the right attitude. Now, it is true that there are some individuals, psychotherapy is not their, uh, their cup of tea. That's absolutely fine. But you have to be consistent with what you think, what you do, and what you say. That's the only thing, whatever it is. Um, and I, I have a very simple thing that I tell people. I, I, I actually I, I train every month. I train all the uh, all the therapists that who are there in our uh, um, uh, setting. There are about uh, twenty five of those therapists, and I, we train. And uh, one common thing I say is that I am a I am a psychiatrist by training but I'm a therapist at heart. What comes naturally and what I want to do is, is therapy. Um, now, next thing, knowledge. Knowledge is a little bit easier to gain because all you have to do is Google about uh, what is CBT, you Google about how you can do this, how you can do that, and you get knowledge, but it's a theoretical level. And of course, with the with the AI, it becomes even, even more easier to, to uh, accumulate a lot of knowledge. However, the more important part is skills. So where do you learn the skills? The skills are best learned when you are a postgraduate or you are an earlier career psychiatrist because once these, your habits are established, it becomes a little bit more difficult to kind of change them. So uh, you, uh, you develop the skills by observing, practicing those skills, getting supervision and guidance about how you are doing and improving yourself. Now, one thing to, to keep in mind is learning should be a lifelong process. I did not complete my, I, I did not get my CBT training the, the, uh, in my first, uh, say, post-graduation. After I completed my residency in, in, in United States and worked for about eight years, which means about 12 years of 12, 15 years, 12 to 13 years after uh, starting psychiatry, I went to a, a presentation by Aaron Beck where he used, uh, uh, where he showed about data on CBT for psychosis. And I said, listen, I want to learn this. So I went to the Beck Institute to get trained for one year. And I said, I specifically want to use CBT for psychosis. And they gave someone who was doing this. So just to give you an example, the, 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 the way to get better is learning, it's lifelong learning. Okay. So when you are uh, uh, utilizing any of our psychotherapy uh, uh, interventions, you have to look at them at three levels of involvement. The, the, at the highest level is where you are doing a traditional session, which could be about 45, 50 minutes or even a, a little bit longer, once a week or once in two weeks, depending upon what the patient is able to do. Um, and so it, it, it and you you start the the sessions and you go through the whole process and then you terminate that so, so terminate in eight, 10, 12 sessions when the patient gets better. A, a little bit lower level is using brief psychotherapeutic interventions, which take maybe about 10 minutes. Sometimes it, they may, may take about uh, 15 minutes. But this is something you should be able to do at least to some of your patients. And then the third level, it is even less involvement of time, is using micro techniques. Average time might take about five minutes or three minutes. We are going to do, hopefully talk about a couple of these things as uh, towards the, the later part of the presentation. Okay. Now, let us remind ourselves about what is the cognitive model. How do you understand the cognitive model? Basically, this is a model where we understand how we process information about the world process information about ourselves and make decisions. Very simply, that is that, okay? 
we all are aware, uh, are aware of the information processing at a logical level meaning where we are uh, say i am uh, say i am giving a presentation you are listening to the presentation and this is at a logical level however as at the information is also being processed at two other levels simultaneously both for you as well as for me one level is at the level of what we call as automatic thoughts so at the level of automatic thoughts the question is hey uh, one of the automatic thoughts might be, hey, I, I wonder if the audience is listening. Um, that could be an automatic thought, but I'm just giving an example. But uh, there is a deeper level. The deeper level is the level of schema. Schema is we have we all have developed templates through which we look at the world and make, make decisions about the world. So these templates, they screen the, the information and they pro provide us uh, uh, ways in which we, we uh, deal with the world. So because the information is occurring at that level and because we are not paying attention to that, the, the thoughts that are coming at these levels are the ones that are causing significant degree of negative uh, emotions, such as anxiety, depression, uh, uh, anger, etc., and in turn lead to dysfunctional behaviors. And the dysfunctional behaviors lead to uh, uh, impaired quality of life. So what do we do? What we do is that essentially we a tell the uh, uh, show it show the patient that the information is being processed at, at more than one level. B you once uh, help them identify those thoughts and C help them change those thoughts. And what is going to happen through these processes? A, first, patients, as they understand more, their self-stigma decreases. Two, oh, they say, wow, oh, this is what is happening. And they become more empowered. Oh, I can do this. And then that leads to an, uh, uh, an improvement in functioning. So uh, it, it is a very, very simple model. At the same time, it is, it is a model that is very effective. So this, this is just a visual diagram to show that there is a the, the, uh, our thoughts, our emotions, our physiological reactions, and our behavior all are interconnected. And in CBT, you can start anywhere. You can start anywhere. You can change the behavior or you can change the thoughts. For example, you all know that if someone has phobia, it is the behavior. You can just do a exposure. But as you do the exposure, the thoughts automatically change. If it is depression, you can start off by talk at, at, at the level of thoughts. Okay, so, so with that kind of a background, now just looking at uh, how, how do we go, how do we go about actually setting up psychotherapy services? And you can look at the population that you deal with, and then you can come to the individual level. So the population that you're coming, if you want to actually plan services very well, you have to be able to stratify the population that is coming to you into those that require just medication and education, psychoeducation about the medication, et cetera, self-help and other things. And then at the, at the next level, medication and someone who uses micro techniques. A beyond, level beyond that is medication, therapy combined. And a further level might be a medication and referral to other place because you the, this is a complex case. You do not really have the time to be able to actually do this. So, and stratifying basically what it does, and this is a bit stratifying is if you are, if you are a clinic, if you are a department, et cetera, stratifying helps you to plan your services. So you stratify, and then you you at, then you go to the individual level. At an individual level, what are some of the barriers that we find in people utilizing CBT interventions or psychotherapy interventions? So the barriers can be within the individual. Barriers can be patient related and system related. In fact, I find this kind of a model very helpful. Whatever barriers we are talking about in in terms of providing services. Okay, so. Um, so barriers, uh, psychiatrist related barriers are attitude to therapy, which we talked about, planning and organization. If you have to plan, you have to organize to be able to actually do this. 
And if you don't do do that and do it on the fly, it can be very difficult and not possible because you know that the, this is a system where you do not know how many people are going to come on a particular day. So you, at least from your side, you plan as much as possible ahead of time. Okay. Um, one another barrier is lack of on, uh, ongoing learning, either lack of opportunities or lack of interest. Um, and I'm not talking about just uh, 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 learning the theoretical part. I'm just talking also about the skill building. Now, system-related barriers are, there might be time, the payment, legal issues, not having an electronic clinical record. It makes it very difficult because you do not remember exactly what has happened. And I think hopefully in future as electronic records come, it, become, it makes life so much more easier. And of course, patient-related barriers, logistics, expectations, et cetera. So how do we address the, how do we try and mitigate the systemic barriers? One way of doing that is actually setting aside a psychotherapy time in, a, a, in your clinic or in your department, which is a, a Tuesday from 10 to 12 or whatever the time it is. Okay? What it does is that those who are providing psychotherapy, it helps them to be in the right mindset to be able to do that because people are still learning, people are still uh, uh, getting a hang of it. Okay. Second, um, uh, second thing which helps is have pre-printed material for common topics. Okay. And I'm going to show you something uh, here. You, uh, you are able to see the index card that I'm holding in my hand. I have a hundred of these index cards. It stays, It says stop module for mindfulness practice. At the first sign of stress, you can do A, B, C, and D. Simple thing, okay? All I have to do when I'm talking to a patient is just give it to them. Third is leveraging technology. Um, see, uh, is where in-person sessions can be complemented with video and audio uh, and tele, and now with uh, the, uh, I recently saw the, uh, the uh, telepsychiatry um, guidelines of the Indian government. Uh, so it makes it more easy and more uh, helpful for the patients in terms of the logistics. Another thing is to see if you can have a trained assistant who can complement what you're doing and spend more time doing the things that you are doing with the family. Um, and of course, we talked about the electronic clinical record. If there is a way that it can be, you can uh, get it. The the all the time and effort you put into that is absolutely worth it. I I go back. Some of my patients come three, four, five years uh, back, and then I can look at it and say, Hey, we had four sessions, and we did this, 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 and this in this of these sessions. The patients, oh yes, I remember. Okay. Um, other thing. Uh, if you're providing outpatient and inpatient, they are slightly different in terms of how to how you go about it, uh, some of the logistics and uh, uh, interventions. Uh, so that's to kind of keep in mind. Yeah. Okay, so if you are doing a CBT intervention, it is useful for you to remember a mnemonic to help you to see whether you did the, an intervention uh, that uh, comes under CBT. It is, the, uh, the mnemonic is CUT PAR, C-U-T PAR, okay? Uh, so number one, uh, are you able to connect with the individual? That's the number one thing. Number two, are you able to understand the problem that is bothering him the most or him or her the most at this time? Number three is what you do the uh, most critically. Teach, what are you teaching? What they are, you are teaching them some new information. If you are able to teach them a new information, hey, you also have these things called automatic thoughts and these come and they increase your anxiety. Wow, that is empowering to the patient, right? Okay, now, or you, you give them a different perspective through, through your, or you teach them a skill. Finally, you, you instill hope, which is realistic. Once you do that, you give them some uh, assignment for them to do in between sessions so that they are thinking about it and they're trying to build their own skill. It's called practice work. Then ask them if there are any questions or any feedback, anything that did not go well. And finally, the, the just reviewing what it is. So this 
in 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 short, this if you if you look at an intervention and you ask yourself, did I do if you did these steps, then you you did a CBT intervention. So, uh, so uh, we are going to to talk about two clinical examples. Gilding, uh, building coping skills to deal with suicidal thoughts, which are based upon a CBT model, and we call it as an ABC plan for suicidal ideation. And the second one, we, we're going to talk about an addiction relapse plan. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to uh, pull out this particular sheet of paper and uh, see if I can stop this sharing and now share this screen. So um, are you able to see these things which says su suicidal thoughts and ABC plan to deal with them? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. So ba basically, very simply, this uh, the, the series of statements which what they do is help the individual to put their suicidal thoughts in perspective. One, if the first one essentially says that, hey, my goal is not to die. My goal in life is actually, I want this suffering to, to be relieved. I want to feel better. That's the first thing. And they agree with that. Second thing is that to say that suicidal thoughts are very common. Uh, and most people, uh, most of the time, people are able to, to deal with them if you allow, uh, if you develop some coping skills or deal with them. Then the third part is the critical part. It, and the third part says, uh, uh, who are the people I value in my life? One, two, three, okay? Second thing, what are my positive qualities that I know? One, two, three, okay? What are the positive things people say about me? One, two, three. What are the tough situations I overcame in life? One, two, three. My goals and dreams in life are, and any other positive things. Essentially asking all these questions is triggering all the things that are positive in the individual. And in the process, it is taking away their thought process from looking at their weaknesses to looking at their strengths. And most people say, oh, I did not think about it. Then what you do is come up with what we call as an ABC plan. ABC plan, A stands for an activity. Is there an activity that you can do that helps you to, uh, to decrease a suicidal thought or helps you to distract yourself from a suicidal thought? So that's number one. So uh, something like I, I, go and, uh, I go for a walk for about 20 minutes uh, and it has to be as specific as possible so that it makes it very e e e easier for them to follow through. So one of the things is that I watch and uh, I'm going to watch an episode of uh, uh, Friends, which is a comedy. Uh, and I'm going to watch this particular episode because that is very funny. Or I might visit a temple, whatever it is. So this is something A is activity that an individual can do. B is something where you, you, you reach out to someone, someone who you can talk to about and say, this is what's happening. Plan B and plan C is here what we say is that calling 988 services or crisis services so that they can talk to someone about their suicidal thoughts. And then you give this as the patient to, to uh, uh, come back the next time and see, see a, a, how effective uh, uh, it is or it is not. Yeah. Um, now, uh, are you still seeing, uh, no, I have to stop that and go to this, uh, uh, this, uh, Okay. The, 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 the second um, one is an addiction cycle that we uh, that I use for patients with any kind of addiction. Okay. And this again is based upon uh, 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 on uh, the, the CBT model and in the addiction cycle. Basically, what I have this in electronic. And I explain to individuals, uh, by the way, are you able to see my screen? Yes. No. Oh, okay, great. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, so every individual with addiction has a bi vulnerability. And the vulnerability... You're not able to see your screen, sir. Oh, you're not able to see the screen? Sorry about that. Let me see what I should do here. And I say, sorry. Okay. Uh, 
now you should be able to yes yes sir okay so so a vulnerable individual big gets into trouble when they reach a meet a high risk situation what is a high risk situation when they have very negative emotions such as i'm anxious i'm very depressed i'm very angry or when they they have social pressure to use people places and things they have interpersonal conflict okay these what they do is that they generate thoughts to use and cravings to use and we have to educate them the difference between thoughts and cravings we don't have the time to go in here but the thoughts themselves do not lead to drinking with the, with the thoughts what happens is sometimes they say when they have the thoughts they say no i'm not going to drink because last time when it when i drank it caused me to, to end up in a hospital with liver problems so what they are doing they are using a, a coping response and not drinking and staying sober but sometimes what they do hey i have not uh, had any drink for 3 months now i'm okay i'm only going to drink one drink and then i will stop so that is called a permission giving belief with that leads to what happens you decide to use once you decide to use then you lost your control and you you go into a full blown relapse so basically what you talk to patient is step 1 what can you do step 2 what can you do step 3 what can you do and then come up with a plan let them write let them and take it so if you really look at it both these th both these interventions actually take between 5 to 10 minutes if you if you are very experienced it might just take 5 minutes for you if if you, you if you are not might take 10 uh, minutes okay and i uh, i'm going to share the data from post graduates who have used this and this is the data we presented in ansips suicidal patients we we use the uh, uh, the abc scale for four patients R roughly on average they had about four sessions uh the initial session was between 30 to 40 minutes depending on the patient and the follow up sessions were about 15 to 25 minutes so you can see that it can be done in a very short period and um uh, uh, sometimes uh, the first and second sessions they came with family members usually less, later sessions they came by themselves okay um and this was the 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 outcome so one of the patients after uh, after four sessions he uh, patient reported a 70 to 80% improvement in suicidal ideation with the plan a suicidal ideation did not progress from ideation to plan to attempt so that was the, the the thing all the four of them found that this was helpful that is an example right now um so uh, i the with regard to the addiction cycle um uh, i have a post graduate i don't know if she is there uh, uh from dakkan medical college who is in her second month now of uh, uh, and she did an inpatient um uh, cbt of so four sessions and after four sessions uh, 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 the, the the patient has a change in his attitude has a concrete plan in place and found the the cbt to be helpful using this particular cycle and you might you might be saying hey he is in an inpatient setting he is going to be he is going to be any way better but the difference is that actually he was willing to talk about his thoughts he is willing to talk about his issues and willing to come up with a plan what he is going to do when his friends ask him to 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 drink when someone is going to do this so that is what the difference is yeah. okay what is the feedback from some of our post graduates okay oh when i do these sessions yeah uh, yeah i building trust and rapport was easier and stronger when i did therapy with uh, uh, patients and not only that it helped me to build rapport with the other patients easier that's number one second thing they said i i noticed that the patients are taking medication much more regularly uh, then patients understand their illness better uh, then a, a other thing is that um it um it helped me to understand the my patients at a much deeper level and be more empathic to them it increased my self confidence in dealing with patients and it made me satisfied and i was more happy that i was doing something and this is what the joy i was talking about earlier on and this is directly from the post graduate this is directly from the horse's mouth okay so um the uh, i i was just uh, uh, do do i have a few more minutes i was told about 40 to 45 minutes yes sir do do i have a few more yeah five five more minutes sir 
five, five more minutes. Okay, so the, the, the what I told you are the brief interventions, but then there are micro interventions, right? So what are micro interventions? So micro intervention is a, even if, even a briefer intervention. So you so sometimes uh, people say I uh, uh, um, I am very anxious. gundala something like that. So so you you know that anxiety can uh, uh, be high at one point, uh, decreased at, uh, less at one point. You ask the patient to rate, hey, on a scale of zero to ten. What is the 10 being the worst? What is the, the, the maximum anxiety that you experience? So they, they say uh, uh, nine or 10, whatever it is. Then you say um, in this, uh, we, at what point of anxiety does actually that you find it very difficult to control and before that you can do something about it. So then you say at, at this point, there may be four, uh, six or seven. So and what have you done for when it was eight or nine? Oh, I went and talked to my mom, okay? So what you do is that you pick up the effective coping skill that they have used and then ask them to write it down. How often uh, can you use it more frequently? Can you add another thing to this? And then ask them to come next time. This is going to take about three minutes, four minutes like that. So essentially what it is, is that people are into this dichotomous thinking. I'm anxious, I'm not anxious. I'm depressed, I'm not depressed. Essentially what you're doing is that you're helping them to, to, to uh, think more dimensionally and start rating, rating their, uh, 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 their symptoms. Second thing, um, and uh, one of the other things with uh, CBT is that you have to act, actually identify the existing strengths and coping skills of the patient. And the patient is going to say, I have been depressed for, so, for, for, for three months. What was the worst po point of depression that was about uh, a week ago? Now, tell, then again, you are going to uh, I, I, I ask them, how did you get through that worst part of depression? Uh, what did you do? What did other people do that is helpful for you? Let us make a list of those and see if we can add something else. Okay, what can we add? Are there, th tell me what are the things that you have enjoyed before your depression started? How many of those things? Is there any of those things that we can add and you regularly do? So if someone, someone li listens to music every day for 10 minutes, you are going to listen to the music and that is going to be part of this. So, so actually it's making a very specific plan with the patient to do an activity that is pleasurable to, to them and asking them to make a note of it. How does that, uh, how do they feel on a zero to 10 scale before doing the activity and after doing the activity? One of the common things that I do with patients is actually asking them to exercise. We know that exercise has an antidepressant effect. And of course, but they, you, you have to do it on a long time. However, even a 20, 30 minute exercise, you, you read the mood before and after. Even it works for anxiety. Before and after, you'll see a difference. So something like that can be done in a few minutes. So, um, uh, the, so these are, these are uh, kind of micro interventions. And so you can choose micro, you can brief, or you can do full therapy. So... To, to conclude what uh, uh, um, uh, I have to say, if you want best outcomes for, uh, 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 for your patients, psychotherapy should be essential part of the treatment period. Psychotherapy in an Indian setting can be incorporated into routine practice. Psychotherapy can be done by postgraduates starting in their very first year and with good results. It can be done in inpatient and outpatient setting. The initial time and effort, uh, invest time and effort investment you put in will pay uh, will pay you in a very big way for your patients and in your own satisfaction, and you'll get more professional satisfaction and joy out of practicing. Okay? Now to facilitate that, I've. Um, 
we uh, we are meeting every week we meaning uh, 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 dr Ra, uh, venkat Ra, uh, rahul is assistant professor at F svs medical college he is the point person and any postgraduate who has a psychotherapy case can become part of this group when we meet at 6 p.m. Indian Standard Time every Wednesday and talk about the therapy sessions that they did, look at what they learned, what can be improved. So this is available for everyone. And uh, so you can utilize. And finally, the, the references. And I am done. Thank you, Dr. Narasimharadigari. Um, I am Dr. Keshara, one of the chairpersons, and Dr. Minhas is another chairperson. Sorry, we missed the introduction of the speaker, actually. Um, uh, no, no, sir, sir, don't worry about that. Yeah. That, that. That is the least important thing. Like... Uh, Dr. Narasimharadigari is, of course, is, uh, one of the first alumni of Institute of Mental Health, Hyderabad, and his passion for uh, psychotherapy is visible. He has previously spoken on two, three occasions in Hyderabad. And as usual, he's always very clear, clear with the examples. And his message is also very clear that the psychotherapy is going to be important, particularly in view of growing number of psychiatrists. Today, the number of psychiatry seats, PG seats are 80. I came to know 80 seats. So we compared to UK, USA, we have a quite different situations. There, the number of psychiatrists are very few, and there are a lot of psychologists, and then the nurse therapists and all that. But here, we have very few psychologists and a huge number of psychiatrists. So who are going to take up this job of uh, providing therapy? So naturally, I think it falls on the future psychiatrists. Uh, it is, I heard from Dr. Minhas that in Dakkan, they are training uh, PGs in CBT. I think every professor should send his postgraduate to do CBT on few patients, particularly anxiety, depression, uh, common common disorders at least. And the one of one advice I give is if you don't have a, a kind of therapist or a trainer, what I, I bring a self help book, good self help book which is available in Amazon, and you can do it for yourself. Self help book is meant for patients. But in Indian context, and we help the patient uh, to use a self-help book. So, so that helps us in training therapy. Not much theory and very simple. What do you say, Dr. Garu? Do you agree well, that self-help? Uh, absolutely, the self-help. And at least for the time being, until my, at, at least right now, I have the passion. We are meeting every every Wednesday. So, in uh, and in fact, I reached out to Dr. Minaj and he was, and uh, I suggested to him, say, Dr. Minaj, can you start a CBT clinic in Dakar Medical College? And he right away identified one person, he and she is coming in. Now we have two people. So, see, we have we have a resource. We have a group. I think what if we if this group group actually we work for the next year by next year these people become trainers for other people yes. so uh, so your point is absolutely well taken so so I think there is a, a growing demand also from patients because now patients are asking for CBT because they are looking at Google and they are coming with asking for CBT so future psychiatrists need to be trained. And for those who are already practitioners, as Dr. Reddy has said, that simple behavioral activation for depression will make a big difference to them. And they will be so happy that the doctor has sent some useful time with them. So I think that is something which every practitioner can take up. Five minutes behavioral activation, go for a walk every day compulsorily, sleep hygiene. These are the few things which we should incorporate into our practice. Um, now I request Dr. Minhas to add. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, we have been working uh, uh, like uh, Dr. Narasimha Reddy, Indo-US uh, CBT training program started by Dr. Ashok Reddy, sir, and uh, Narasimha Reddy, sir, and Dr. Mukesh, sir. And uh, uh, we are able to train some of our PGs in CBT. And uh, now uh, some are even the newcomer uh, uh, is interested in CBT, and she has done one therapy with uh, alcohol dependent case she's here now uh, so anshuli uh, so uh, they are they're they're doing and i'm thankful to sir and as a uh, 
Kishore sir said, we have uh, lots of PGs coming out. Uh, every year we have 80 PGs, 80 psychiatry residents who, who would come out would become psychiatrists. And many of them can take up uh, cognitive behavior therapy or psychotherapy as uh, their main earning source rather than uh, depending upon a routine clinical psychiatric practice. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, questions from audience as we... Uh, any questions? Sir, sir Dr. Ashok Redigar wants to So Basically, I, we are grateful to Dr. Narsimha Reddy for taking out his time and putting a lot of efforts to help us and initiate uh, interest in CBT. And we have started the group called Indo-US Psychiatric Education Forum about two years back. And this is mainly meant for all medical college in Telangana state. All PGs of uh, all the medical college of Telangana state can join this. And every month, fourth Sunday is the session, online session at 8 a.m. the same time. So anyone can register for this. And alternate months, we have program. One month is CBT. One month is interview skills training. Interview skills training is by Dr. Mukesh Sangadia and CBT is by Dr. Narsimha Reddy. Anyone interested can just contact me and give the their name. Just send the through WhatsApp to my number, your email ID, your phone number, and your interest. That's all. We'll arrange for that. We'll send the link so that you can participate. And second thing is for the last three years, uh, in all the ANSIPs, we are presenting one workshop every time. Even this coming ANSIPs at Cochin also, there's a one workshop on CBT, probably all of you can just attend. So in addition to this uh, every month program, what Dr. Nassimaradi has told about Wednesday, every Wednesday evening, if somebody has a case, they can join the group, it will be guided by them. So these two programs are going on. So I wish all of you can take the benefit of these programs. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nassimaradi. Thank you, Ashok sir. Dr. Raghuram Reddy Garu. I'm Dr. Raghuram Reddy, sir. consultant psychiatrist, Asha Hospital. Uh, Dr. Nasma Reddy was from the first batch of MD in IMH. He was brilliant, both himself and Dr. Mukesh was brilliant. And uh, uh, what all I wanted to add to his he has been doing many workshops and presentations on CBT. He has brought it uh, very near to the postgraduates and psychiatrists. I only wanted to say that he is also interested at depth in Bhagavad Gita and psychotherapy. At least Bhagavad Gita, like Dr. M. S. Reddy. He has um, Bhagavad Gita. He has trained, uh, exposed to the youngsters and later on to others also. Uh, uh, once in, he went as senior uh, houseman to Nimhans after passing MD. After a few couple of months, he told them, you have a huge staff in um, Nimhans. With that, you are doing community and other psychiatry. We, with much shorter staff, we are doing the same thing in IMH. That's what his, his words, it's not mine. So, because Dr. Ms. Reddy is laughing at me. So, it is nothing to do with me. <laughs> the, I think I, uh, I should not take more time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, if, if, if there are no more questions, we will conclude the session. We once again thank Dr. Redigaru. It is both a pleasure and privilege to chair this session. Thank you, sir. Any uh, and uh, th Yeah, th thank you very much for the opportunity. As I said, this is the, the, I, I, I love this stuff. I want our postgraduates to, to get as much training as possible. Anything I can do to, to help in terms of... Uh, 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 training them in terms of guiding them, in terms of helping them uh, uh, do research projects, I'm willing to do. Okay. Thank you on, very much. Dr. On that note, on that note. Thank you, sir. Thank Namaskar. You.
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू टू द स्पीकर चेयर पर्सन फॉर शेयरिंग योर एक्सपर्टीज I request the chairpersons are requested to present a memento to the speaker, and I request Ashok Reddy sir to collect it on behalf of Dr. Narasimha Reddy sir. Thank you.